1915 was the first full year of the Great War. So far, Hollywood had not been affected, and it was booming. In 1915, Cecil B. DeMille made 13 films, all hits. His output included comedies, adventures, and two dramas that would be acclaimed internationally. The partnership with Sam Goldwyn and Jesse Lasky continued to be a happy one. After adapting numerous books and plays, Cecil commissioned two original screenplays. Hector Turnbull wrote The Cheat. Jeannie McPherson wrote The Golden Chance. Cecil began directing The Golden Chance in October but had to shut it down when Edna Goodrich proved to be both unphotogenic and unreliable. Cecil then had to turn to shooting The Cheat. Jesse needed The Golden Chance finished too. Both films had to be delivered on time to Adolf Zucker. Cecil accomplished this by directing one film in the day and one at night, with a nap in between, for three weeks. Cleo Ridgely was playing a woman of good background, reduced to part-time millinery because of a worthless husband. Jeannie McPherson's Golden Chance gave Horace Carpenter the role of the cruel drunkard. Note how Cecil and Jeannie convey Steve's character with small bits of business. Mary is drafted by her rich client for some unusual after-hours work. Mary's boss watches her dinner etiquette, including which fork to use. Her dinner companion is played by DeMille regular Wallace Reed. Mary must not reveal that she's married and poor, and Cleo Ridgely conveyed all this without intertitles. When Steve robs Mary's boss, she is accused, but her newfound admirer uncovers the truth in a terrific battle. Steve is killed, and Mary is free to start a new life, but Cecil and Jeannie give an ambiguous ending to the story. Mary must face life alone, at least for a while. The other film made in tandem was also instantly recognizable as a DeMille production, for he cast a musical comedy star in a dramatic role. He also cast the newly popular Japanese actor Sesua Hayakawa. The cheat told a strange story. Edith, an extravagant socialite, flirts with a Japanese art collector named Tori. Edith steals $10,000 in charity funds for a stock speculation. She loses it and her husband can't help her. Tori helps her, 
expecting favors in return. Blessed with a windfall, Edith reneges on her promise. Creating a sensation in Europe was a milestone for Cecil B. DeMille. The new year brought even more milestones. The DeMilles bought a mansion in Laughlin Park, which is now Los Feliz. The Lasky Feature Play Company merged with Adolf Zucker's famous players to get better distribution deals from Paramount. This was Zucker's idea. He wasn't pleased with the lukewarm reception that Cecil's epic was getting. He was also having trouble with his very expensive star. After Charlie Chaplin, Mary Pickford was the most famous and popular movie star in the world. Like Cecil, though, she'd had a flop, and her upcoming release had not previewed well. Zucker told Cecil to direct Mary Pickford but Cecil demanded total authority over the controlling star. Mary Pickford agreed to Cecil's requirements, but she wasn't happy about the idea. Cecil wanted to make a film about the Great War, but he was overruled. He and his resolute star ended up in Santa Cruz, California, making a Western. Cecil did his best to charm Mary. She was playing a role like that in Belasco's The Girl of the Golden West, a brave, cheerful girl who falls for an outlaw. While the film was being made, Mary's Poor Little Rich Girl became a hit, and Romance of the Redwoods became as big a hit. Zucker wanted another film from Cecil and Mary. She wasn't thrilled, but Cecil's enthusiasm for a patriotic film was catching. Although the Lusitania sinking had occurred nearly two years earlier, America finally entered the war in April 1917. Mary was playing scenes from reality. Thank you. 
The film had suspense, pathos, and symbolism. It became a major hit for Mary, Cecil, and Famous Players Lasky films. The new company was pushing its partners to the top of the Hollywood heap. This wasn't good enough for Zucker. He was as short as Napoleon and as hungry for power. Two things stood in his way. Sam Goldwyn, who was dynamic but tactless, and William Hodkinson, who had something that Zucker wanted, the Paramount Company. If there was a shakeup, where would this leave Cecil? <laughs> 